Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today we're going to be making a really simple floral border with the new Bloom set. This is from the June 2017 release. So it is brand spanking new. And so I have my large, um, the original size Misty here and I'm going to stamp the border onto some Canson uh, watercolor cardstock. And I stamped mine twice because the Intense Black Ink is not that bold but it is Copic safe and then it's also archival. I saw another crafter do this little trick where they put like a piece of acetate so they could still see where they were lining their stamp up but then they didn't have to clean the stamp in between while they were moving it. I thought it was completely brilliant so try that if you need to move the same stamp around. That it's It works awesome. Now typically I don't show you me stamping the other side but I had a little helper <laughs> who joined me and I just couldn't bear to cut it out. So you can see that is my uh, my four-year-old child, his, his little hands there. Um, loves to see himself on the camera and then he thought he would help me stamp my card. So um, I just couldn't, I couldn't cut it out guys. <laughs> so once we were done stamping um, then I went ahead and this is just regular Nina cardstock and I'm using the same intense black ink to stamp out um, some of the single flowers and leaves that are in the set. And then for my background I'm going to use Zig uh, Clean Color Markers. And the reason I decided to use these is because um, they're super fast and the color is really really vibrant. So when I was putting down the color, I legitimately was, not, I'm scribbling it, you can see. I'm not paying any attention to what is next to what. I just wanted it to be like the fastest possible way. I knew that I was going to have a piece popped up in the center, but I didn't know how large it was going to be at that point. So I just used a light blue to kind of give myself a border so that the color um, would come in as far as possible and be covered up so that it would, you would just see the watercolor portion and there wouldn't be any white paper. So you can see I'm using the entire rainbow here um, and not paying attention to where I'm putting down the colors. Like if green is next to red or yellow is next to purple, I'm not paying attention to any of that because I wanted to see how fast and quick I could do this. So I'm using a number two round brush um, and then I'm just, I started on the the pigment and then just kind of dragged it out to the blue. Now because Zigling color markers are so vibrant, um, you pick up a lot of pigment on your paintbrush and basically kind of drag it around. So this was not the best method um, because things did start to get a little bit muddy because I am dragging the color and you'll see I'm frequently rinsing but that doesn't change the fact that I am still dragging that color around because I'm doing it so quickly and you can definitely see here in the top left hand corner how just kind of muddy it got. For the second side, the right hand side, I decided okay well maybe I'll I'll blend out the blue first so I'll lay down like a border of color and then I'll go in and see if that works any better. Um, which it did, but I still got some muddy areas because, like I said, I'm, I'm dragging that color over the flowers. So on this side, it was the bottom right that got really, really muddy, but we're not done with it yet. So just hang on, because if you have done this yourself, there's a way to save it. Because you know me, and I ain't starting over. So I blotted up the edges because I couldn't mask, the, I, I couldn't tape this paper down um, because I was using the edges. So I needed it to be the exact size of my card front um, so that I would have the border directly on the edge. So this time around, I'm going back in and wherever the color was concentrated, I'm just adding more of it. So wherever it ended up like that the pink was or the red was, I'm just adding more of it right on top. I'm going to add that same line of blue um, and this time around, I have a new game plan. So I'm still putting down the same colors. The only color I didn't put down the second time around is the green. Um, the reason that I didn't put the green down is I really felt like he was the trouble. He was like the, the he was the instigator, the little antagonist in this whole thing with why my colors were getting muddy. But this time I also started with the blue because I realized, okay, well that method worked out better. So I set down this barrier of blue. And then I stuck to the same color. So instead of dragging the color all around, I did all of the purple areas on the left hand side, then all of the pink, then all of the orange or red or what have you. And I was rinsing in between. So this helped 
so that I wasn't dragging the color all over my paper. Um, I was just um, moving the pigment around kind of where I had put it and this method worked out by far the best. So that would be my recommendation if you're going to try this. You can you don't have to really pay attention to where your colors are necessarily because I do ha still have yellow next to purple and, and all of that stuff. Um, and the blue border I still have orange in there. They're complementary colors. But I just stayed concentrated on the colors uh, one at a time and that seemed to really um, just be the best. And I, I love, I always do my zigs twice anyway because of the way that um, just that second coat gives that real vibrancy and I love bright colors. And it's summer and bright colors make me happy. So once I am done with this and blended everything out, I'm going to go ahead and heat set it, um, which I didn't mention before. I did do that the first time. Everything was dry when I added the markers. And then we're going to hop into just some really simple Copic coloring. So I have everything stamped out. I'm not being particularly careful because I'm going to fussy cut them. So for the leaves, I'm only going to use these two leaves at the top. I just put down my lightest color and then just added one quick stroke um, to each leaf in the center of the darkest color and then blended it back out with the lightest. Like these are so teeny tiny. I, I didn't need to spend a lot of time on them and certainly didn't need to spend a lot of time blending because they're just minuscule. Um, so for the flowers, um, I picked basically a three color blend and for these roses, I'm just doing a line of color where I want it to be the darkest and then I'll do that same thing in the same position, same exact line with the darkest color and then work back out toward my lightest color again. A lot of times I hear um, or people leave me comments on YouTube and talk about how they're, you know, they keep practicing but they're not happy with their coloring. And a lot of times it's because they're afraid of the dark colors. Um, dark colors are scary because there's no coming back from them. If you put the dark color down and then you don't like it, you, there's pretty much no way to get it up. I mean, you can hit it with the colorless blender, but you're probably going to have a lot of bleeding. Um, but that doesn't mean that you should skip them. Don't skip them. I mean, really adding that dark, even if you just add a line of it, just start out small, just add a little bit, a little line of it can make such a difference in the dimension of your coloring and you you really will be much more pleased with the way things look. So for the violets, I used a three color blend, but I'm not going to lie, I went back in with a VO1 because I felt like the top needed some lightness and then I also went back in with the VO9 because I felt like the petals underneath weren't dark enough. So for the top flower, I'm using an RV blend and I'm doing the same thing that I did with the rose on the bottom, but I'm doing it a little bit differently. The reason I'm doing it a little bit differently is because of the way that the RVs work. The lighter colors of the RVs pick up so much pigment from the darker colors that I couldn't fill the whole thing in because I knew I was going to have to use the lightest color to blend them to blend that RV09 and I didn't want to go over the entire flower with it. So I did take my Copics and go onto the watercolor paper. You can color right right over zigs. You can color on watercolor paper with Copics. I've never had any issue with it um, or distress inks or whatever your watercolor medium is. I just, I did go back through and add some color to the purple pink and red flowers just to kind of set them apart and so that there would be just a little bit of dimension and to kind of play up those colors. The other thing that I did was um, add in the green. So I did take my YG03, it's the same thing I did the other leaves in, and I just went over the leaves on the background to kind of bring in that green. Though I mean you can see in the background from the first coat there is still some green there, uh, but I wanted the leaves to be green. And if you want them to be uh, completely opaque and not to be able to see the color underneath, just use a darker color. I used a really light one. To add some detail to the background, I took a white gel pen and just kind of added to what was already there. There's lots of little dots and bubbles and um, lots of little details. And then for the flowers, I did the same thing. I um, just colored in that center for the one that has the extra detail and then I added highlights to the other flowers. I prefer to outline all of my images. If you watch my videos, you know this. Um, it's just I like a bold black outline. So I did that with all of the pieces I'm going to be fussy cutting. And then I also did my entire background. Completely not necessary. This is the, I mean, this is the workings of a crazy person, people. Um, 
The reason that I do it is because I like that bold outline. Is anybody going to notice that bold outline? Probably not. That's just me thing. So as you can see, I went ahead and fussy cut them out. I cut a piece of paper to two and three quarters um, so that I could, it would be big enough for my sentiment, which is also included in the set. Um, but then it would also um, cover, be large enough to cover up so that you would just see the watercolor. So I started arranging my fussy cut flowers and leaves and I messed around with this for a ton of time. Once I was happy with the way that it looked, I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering them. I adhered all of the leaves flat with Tembo Mono Multi Glue and then some of the flowers I popped up. Um, if there were two flowers together, uh, I adhered one flat with the Tembo Mono Multi Glue and then popped one of them up. Um, this is just to give it a little bit of extra dimension um, you know, just, I guess, so that they don't look like they're just laying on top of each other. And I love the, how these flowers are separate from the rest of the border, because then you can just completely use them for something totally different. You don't even have to use the border, even though it's really easy to use, as you can see with this background, which looks like a full background, but totally is not. So once I had those um, all adhered and I was happy with their placement and the way that they were, um, basically the only other thing that I did, oh, I popped it up. Yeah, that's good. I popped it up. So this is just some white fun foam cut down um, just slightly smaller than the stamped piece. And then I'm going to pop that up over the background. Again, this is just another added layer because it is really, a, I mean, a pretty simple card. It's got some a watercolor background and um, just a few little, you know, copa colored flowers. So once I was happy with the way that that was on there, um, I went ahead and just added some clear Winkastella and I added it to all of the flowers, including the ones in the background, whether I colored them with Copics or not. And then that is the entire card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you hanging out and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.